Let me go to Dr. Tanvir Ahmed now because we've talked to him throughout the pandemic about some of the psychiatric issues uh, manifesting themselves in our society because of not so much the pandemic, of course, but our response to the pandemic. And he's written a report uh, looking at some of the effects on our teenagers and the need for more self-reliance among our young. Thanks for joining us, Tanvir. Tell us what you've been looking at and what conclusions you've come to. As you alluded to, Chris, the pandemic really exposed this problem of youth mental health. Now, it looked like the pandemic caused it, but it, it really, it worsened it, but it was building probably over at least a decade, according to the numbers. Right across the Western world, we're seeing increases in rates of anxiety, suicide, self-harm, eating disorders. And it's a pretty big, it's a pretty major question, you know, what's going on here? Now, the obvious question is, is it a, a partly related to technology? And, and to, in some respects, it is. And I'll tell you why. I think the way to think about technology is it's, it creates a world for kids of extreme novelty. Like, imagine we walked around in a world where every corner there was a fast food outlet, a McDonald's, KFC, and you could just walk in and get it. If you had pretty poor traits of impulse control and you, you, you wouldn't, you'd be eating all day, you'd be fat, we'd all have diabetes. The modern world of technology is almost a bit like that, except the exploitation is around social connection. So we get cheap hits of social connection. And if you can't defer gratification, control impulses, it, it, you really don't develop healthily. So that's one of the key points I raised. Now, uh, and something I examine in the report, Chris, is the notion of character. What do we mean of, by it? And so a lot of academics have looked at this and they break it up into performance character and moral character. Now, moral character can be say so things like lying, et cetera, and we're seeing some of that debate during the election now. But performance character is about things like exactly like that. Can you persist? Can you overcome adversity? Can you defer gratification? And what I'm arguing is the world we live in now, you need those traits more than ever because we're exposed to so much novelty. But I'm also arguing that I think we're medicalizing more and more of these traits. So what we used to call character is increasingly now whether it's a type of anxiety disorder, attention deficit. And, and there are certainly situations where that's appropriate. But I actually think increasingly... Yeah, but sometimes, sometimes it's a way of avoiding personal responsibility, right? Well, exactly. What I'm alluding to is I think as families, communities, including schools, it's actually stopping us from trying to build these things in a much more intentional way. And, and that's actually the place that it should be happening. And I'm seeing this all day. I'm seeing this all day, people coming in with all these things, what we might previously called uh, just ordinary things of, tra of character that we're trying to build, either in, in schools or in households. And that's actually what's making them more vulnerable to the effects of technology. Now, the final point I, I make in this report, Chris, because we're seeing these problems and they're linked to the youth mental health crisis, I actually think we're seeing disadvantage too narrowly. We talk about disadvantage too narrowly through economics, where I think we need to think about it increasingly, at least as much, through psychological skills. Because these are actually the things that determine whether you're able to have, say, a healthy working life or, or good relationships. So I think you almost, in, in terms of redistributing economically later in life, we need to try and work at pre-distributing some of these psychological skills or the skills of character. Well said, Tanvir. Fascinating stuff. Thanks for joining us.